Uh, what's going on here? Hmm? Hmm? All right. Afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're finishing up the sunflower mold. Um, probably not going to be able to pour it tonight because I got to go bowl and league tonight. So, and I'm probably going to do it tomorrow, but we're getting there anyway. Just finishing up pushing in this copper color mica, which is so funny because I just created this out of orange and some, uh, some, the original color, which is a copper golden color. Who's calling me? Spam is calling me. Awesome. I'm like looking through my colors and I'm like, I have this act, almost this exact same color already mixed for me. I bought it. Leave it to me. So we're just going to fade in the colors for the center of this little guy. This little gal. And uh, tomorrow we shall see how she turns out. I'm going to bring the center in really bright. With orange and yellow. It's just a matter of just tapping it in. Gently pushing it in. And however you like. I'm doing three colors, three different sunflowers. So once I finish this mold, the next one will probably be a purple and yellow version of this one. And then I think we'll do kind of a, um, I don't know, maybe kind of a red and greenish. I just think that's too Christmassy. I don't really want the Christmassy look out in my, um, where our pool and the spa are. So I might do something a little bit more along the lines of magenta and purple, something like that. We'll have to see. I always associate the colors red and green with obviously the holidays. And I really don't want that to be the issue or the thing out of my area of relaxation because the holidays for me are anything but relaxing. Yeah. And I know I had a few subscribers on YouTube. I do appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. I will do my best to get to all three platforms, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube to make sure I, if you have any questions or you want to know what in the heck I'm doing or how to do it, that I can help you out. I am, I picked up this hobby about a year, not even a year ago. Um, well, I guess it's been over a year, um, with, uh, when the pandemic hit and I've been always, I've always been, I've, I've dabbled in epoxy before, but never sort of to this degree where I have molds and I have mica powders and I have tints and I have, you know, all this wonderful stuff that you can do with mica powder and, or with, uh, with the molds and or epoxy resi, epoxy resi, epoxy resin. <laughs> So um, I'm just gradually just, you know, increasing my skill level. And I saw this mold on Etsy. I actually think I, I want to say I saw it on YouTube as well. But I can't remember who the artist was, another re um, resin artist. But um, oh my goodness, buddy. My Vishla's in here with me snoring away over there. I just did a big sigh. Excuse me, I'm going to just move this a little bit so that I can get more of the mold in the frame. Okay, well, I don't know that that made any difference, honestly. I need to tighten my arm. I see my bot has joined me, so I feel as if I can proceed. 
Now I'm just going to take a little bit of orange and fade it in with the coppery color, the bronzy color that I used here. Because I want to end this in the center. I want it to be a really pretty bright yellow. And the thing is, what I'm doing here, I have no idea what it's going to look like underneath. Because this is honestly, this is the bottom of the, the, the piece. The top is whatever gets picked up by the resin once I pour the resin. So it could be completely different on the other side. I have no idea. I have no idea. It's, a, it's just a big mystery. It's a big damn mystery. It's what it is. Yeah. So if you've never used mica before, I'm just warning you. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's like glitter on crack. It goes everywhere. It really wants to stick to this brush. And these brushes are just you know, inexpensive brushes I got at uh, the local you know, Joanne's Fabric Store. Or yeah, Joanne's Fabric Store. I'm sure they have them at any, you know, I think they were $10 for like a set of, you know, different sizes. because they're going to get destroyed by doing this. In fact, this is the one I was using yesterday. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> this is the one I was using yesterday. Where's my hand? Where is everything here? Um, and it's just trashed. This is the one I was using to get into all the nooks and crannies for the main part of this here. It's trash. It's done. It lasted me, though. It did its job. It did its job. And if you're watching this live on YouTube, feel free to chat me up. This is, I think this is going to turn out nice. The thing is, like I said, I don't know what it's going to look like underneath. It could be a complete bomb. And I'll have spent, you know, who knows how many hours on this, and it'll just look terrible. Who knows? I mean, there's going to be some pretty part of it. And the beauty of using uh, mica powders like this is that if there are any bubbles, because I'm going to hang this outside by our spa and pool area, um, you're not going to be able to see them because this is going to this part will be hung to the the uh, back of the or to the the wall. So I'll do my best to mitigate bubbles as best I can, but I'm not overly concerned if one sneaks through, except for. You know, if it sneaks, well, it won't even matter. I mean, unless it leaves a hole, like in parts of the mold. Like if it, it's a bubble that's right on a corner or something, and I demold it, and then there's a hole there because of the way it cured, that will kind of bug me. But, again, I'm not selling this one. This is just going into our little entertainment haven out back. But if anybody wants to buy them, by all means, I'm not going to stop you. Give me a shout out. This one's going to be pretty pricey because of the amount, of not only the amount of time I'm putting into it, but also the amount of resin I'm going to need. So that's to account for costs and time. All right. Moving on to the yellow. I think I have a yellow that's not in a tube like this. I think I have one in a jar that I can reach from. Let's see what I have here. That's a sunshine golden yellow, but I really want it to kind of pop. What is this? There we go. Fantasy yellow. There we go. Sold. Sold.
please feel free to chat. Another thing I'm concerned about since I haven't tried it, one on the scale and two, I left the, I was able to finish all the petals last night and I'm gonna double check all of them before I, pull, I pour to make sure I got it in all the crevices. But I hope leaving the mica on the silicone mold doesn't cause any issues, like it won't release. Um, that's gonna be pretty much heartbreaking because one, this mold was expensive, and two, I really love this mold. All right, we're going in for the yellow. Again, I will say it, never open up your mica over top of your project. You will cry. How you going, Bella? Oh, I didn't know Bella was in here. She's my cat, Ahula. I was really hoping this would be a little bit brighter, but that's okay. I think we're just going to go with the muted colors. It's all right. I'm okay with that. Then I'm going to take some of this yellow and mix it with some white. Doing okay over there, Puffy? No licking. Lick all your pretty fur off, buddy. I didn't want to do traditional sunflower colors because I was like, if you think about it, almost all flowers are sunflowers because they follow the sun, the trajectory of the sun. But really, I mean, if you think about it, if you're going to get all profound, all flowers are sunflowers, or most flowers are sunflowers. Provided this works out, I believe it's going to, there's my dogs, that's right, go bark at absolutely nothing. Somebody's riding by on a bike, I can almost guarantee it. The UPS man or Amazon or a delivery person and, and bicycles riding by. They just go ballistic for some unknown reason. Bella, hey, I don't want any, any of the mica to, you know, like be, I want it to, I want it to be, I don't want it to be like piled in there. I want it to be just layered on top of the, um, mold. I am doing what right now? I'm looking for my white. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to put this in a little cup. Um, you know, I was half tempted. Nah, it's too late. I think that cup was used. I don't want to say it had glitter in it. I'm just going to put a smidge of this. What white is this? White. Okay, fair enough. And what is the white I have over here? Or do I? Satin silver white. That's That seems more, I don't know. Although I'm looking at these two and they almost look identical. I'm... I don't think they came from the same company. They did not, but I bet they're in cahoots. That's right. I said cahoots. Just deal with it. So if you're just joining, I am pushing a crap ton of mica powder into this brand new mold that I received the other day. And it will not be a shiny result. It will end up being very matte because it will, the epoxy, the resin will pick up, should, let's just use the operative word, should pick up everything that I've pushed into the mold here once it cures. And I did test this on a smaller mold, and that is a dog paw print mold that I, I made. And 
So you can see the back is clear, or I think you can, you know, or, or shiny. And the front is very matte. Um, and that's because I pushed these two, I created these two colors because I have vishlas. Um, so I made them like a vishla puppy paw. And it got every single bit of mica powder out of the mold. I didn't have to clean it or anything. I will clean it when I use it, before I use it the next time. But I didn't have to. It just, it, I don't know, it's magic. It's like, it's sorcery. I have no idea. It's just sorcery. I don't need very much because I'm not. Not very much of an area here to finish. So we'll just do these two things. Let's stir it up a little bit. Ugh. I'll have a lid on this. Who knows how this is going to turn out. If you have any suggestions on stuff you'd like to see next, by all means, let me know. I am open for new and creative ideas for sure. I love doing this. I love creating in general. Time is it 4.15? We actually might have time to pour some resin. I really don't know what I want to do with this. I feel like I'll just set it aside for right now so I can spill it later because that's what's going to happen, guaranteed. All right, so we finished the um, pushing the mica. I'm just cleaning it out. And I'm going to double check all the interiors here to make sure I did touch it with, with mica. Um, I'm going to double check that I got everything on here as well. I see some spots that I may have missed and I need, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where's that color I just, oh, right here. Actually, this is not the one I need, but I'm going to use it anyway because I don't know. Well, where is that other one that I created yesterday? I've got to clean up my workspace. It's very, very messy right now. Oh, I know where I put them. Put, put them away. Imagine that. Uh, no, I didn't. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. But we're just going to use a little bit of this. If it's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. That copper color I just created. Where did I see that piece? I think right here. I am glad I'm doing the mica, and the reason why is because I can see this would be a nightmare to mitigate bubbles once you started pouring your resin. The beauty of it is we shouldn't be able to see through this. It should be completely opaque. And so any bubbles that we miss in the corners, or the crevices here, except for the ones that might be on the very edge, it shouldn't be an issue. I think I got them all. I think I double checked them last night, but I just really want to make, yeah, I don't like that. Hang on. This is one thing I don't, excuse me. <laughs> that was um, lunch. <laughs> one thing I don't like about um, colored molds. It's hard to sort of see where you have got gotten. And see, I used a similar color there, and I don't know if that's the color of the mold or if it's the, co the color I actually put in there. But I'm just going to be safe. Right here. I think I did it put some in there, but just don't want to risk it. Um, um, um. I 
need to turn my lights on. That's half the problem here. Jeez. Hmm, look at that. The tricky part is going to be knowing when to stop pouring this thing, too, because it's got lips on it. I do not want to... Hmm, see, I think I missed that whole... I think I missed that whole one in there? I'm not going to risk it. Uh, maybe I didn't, but still, I don't... And there are the dogs again. Sweet. Rudy. He's okay, buddy. He's okay. Bella. Child of mine. All right. I think I've gone around the whole thing. I think we're about as good as we're going to get. We're about to find out. I think I do have time to go ahead and pour this mold. The hard thing is I didn't freaking fill it with water to figure out how much I was going to need. And having said that, I'm not sure I want to pour it right now because I don't have anything ready for other mold, for other to fill the silicone, you know, fill, throw the epoxy into. I mean, I could do some coasters, you know, always, you can always use coasters, but... I really kind of want to be very deliberate with this particular deal. Oh, maybe I will. Just pull the trigger. What time is it? Oh, I've got more than an hour. But I always like to watch my molds for about 45 minutes after I pour for bubbles. And that's why I think I'm not going to do it right now. I think I'm going to hold off and, and do it tomorrow or not let's see 415 515 415 take me eight minutes to pour it I think we've got the time I'm just a big procrastinator when it comes to mixing epoxy being a pro procrastinator I guess we can just go ahead and dive in, huh? What do you think? Let's see what this thing looks like. So it looks like, huh? This isn't like, like my instant gratification. I use these measuring cups from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And I just turn my resin upside, my cup upside down and just let it, you know, just drip out and dry. And it comes out in almost one piece. And it's like, I don't know, it's like popping those packing bubbles. It's very, very gratifying. The little things, folks. I'm just saying. The little things. You really got to make sure you get it all, though, so you don't want any of this old stuff pouring into your new stuff. I got plenty of clean ones over here. I don't know why. I'm just. I don't know, probably just because I think this has got some residuals in here. I'll just retire this one for right now until I can clean it out properly. And we'll grab another one here. That's not it. God, where's all this dirt coming from? Measuring cup down. There we go. That one's better. Actually, I don't think that one's been used yet, so that's good. These ones I gotta clean out. They got some sand or something in them. I think this is gonna take quite a bit of epoxy. I mean, now I think, I know it's gonna take quite a bit of epoxy. Um, 
That's why this piece, when I finally do start making them for like sale, because I'm making three by for myself. Of course, I can make some in the interim. But I don't know why that glove is got holes in it. Um, this is this will be a this will be you know a com comparable to my time and effort and the amount of uh, resin I'm about to put in this. Uh, yeah. And fingers crossed, it works. Just putting on a different glove. The other one tore. So while we're doing this, I'm going to clean up my workspace here. All the stuff that I used over. Oh, that's one I created. Over the last day. And the missing one. Is this it? Mm, missing two. No, missing one. This is not it. That's a different lid. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Where did my other one go? I'm missing one color, and I wouldn't be able to tell you what color that is, to be honest with you. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. It's hiding. Mm -hmm. Put that down here. Let's get these guys put away. This was actually pretty fun doing this. I got a kick out of it. Uh, missing a color. There they are. I got a kick out of it. It was just, I don't know, it was therapeutic, cathartic. Just, you know, listening. I was on Twitch last night. I have a friend, of, well, an acquaintance on Twitch that we periodically pop into each other's feeds so that, um, you, you know, get registers on Twitch, if you will. Um, and it was nice just chatting with him yesterday while he's a young and he's up in the, the Canada. That's his residence. I can go that. I can stay there. That's empty. These are what I created. So these can go down here. Let's get this place cleaned up. My uh, cutting board turned out really well. I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but it turned out amazing. Got to head to the big lots or wherever I got them and get a few more. The only thing is, it's such a messy project. It's so messy. <laughs> All right, we are getting there, folks. I have... Coaster holder and coasters on stand uh, molds on standby. Should I need them? I got my tweezers here for any thing that falls in there. Go ahead and put my paintbrushes away. That can go over here. Baby wipes, paper towels, chapstick. These can go into the trash. All right, well, I am going to mix the epoxy or the resin right now. So uh, either stick around while I do that, it's incredibly boring, or check back in when I am um, fi finally, finally pouring this thing, which should be in about 15 minutes, because I am going to let it sit on my heating pad to try and disperse, dispel, whatever the freaking word is, er, any as many bubbles as possible. So, see you in a bit. All right. I wonder how much I have in here. Oh, that should be enough.
I'm going to go for 16 ounces, but I can almost guarantee you it's going to take more than that. I will be very, very surprised if it doesn't. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it'll be about right. Uh, let's see. That might be about, I don't know. You just never know. I'm going to get my apron on here before I get the clothes that I'm going bowling in tonight. All trashed. Shouldn't even be wearing them right now. Mm, good. Get to stir in here. I love these spatulas. I got them at the dollar store for a buck. I picked up a couple of them for not only use here, but also for um, uh, use in the kitchen. I mean, I don't use the same ones in the kitchen that I do here, obviously. So before somebody says something about that. My normal procrastination is going on here. So let's get to stirring. It's really warm in Cal Northern California today. We're in the 80s, so the house is nice and warm. Let's see, I've got my thermometer over here. Where are we sitting at? I don't know if you can see it, but we're sitting at almost 80 degrees in the house, 70-ish, 75-ish. It's perfect for Pouring, mixing, curing resin. Yeah, I don't know if 16 ounces is going to be enough. It's all right. If I have to mix up a little more, I will. Come on, come off the side there. Just folding it in nice and gently. You don't want to create too many bubbles. You're going to create bubbles, but you don't want to create too many of them. I'm just bringing this out of the camera because I want to make sure I've got it completely mixed and it's hard for me to see over there. Boy, they are talkative tonight. It's because it's such a nice day. Everybody's out walking their dogs. They're riding their bikes. They're doing all their little activities outside. Getting there. Usually about two, two and a half minutes is all it takes to thoroughly mix your resin. But you don't want any more ribbiting in there. You basically want it to be really clear. If you still see ribbons, that means the part A and part B have not fully combined, at least for the stone coat epoxy resin. Um, and this particular resin is one to one, so I don't have to do any math because I pretty much suck at math and map reading. Math and map reading. I'm sure there's a scientific reason behind that. Okay, so um, I'm just going to set that on my he heating pad, which I have set on high right now. And I am going to just step out of the camera for a second. I want to turn my fan around and vent out the window. 
because I do have um, quite a bit of epoxy that I'm pouring here. And quite frankly, it, this stuff is not bad. Like it, it's, it won't stink you out of the room, but you certainly don't want to be sitting there, you know, huffing it like a spray, spray paint can. So um, I'm going to just step outside or step outside, step over to the side of the room here and vent this out, which is going to make it hot in here. But that's what I get. And you shouldn't be able to hear the fan. But if you do hear the fan, please let me know. I mean, I'm obviously, I'm right up next to it. So you should be, you, sh you can hear it. But hi, buddy. Coming in? You coming in? Um, I kind of see it registering on the, on my mixer. If it gets annoying, somebody please just let me know. Just one last look in here. Make sure I don't have any dog hairs or anything. I don't know why I would have dog hairs. Rudy Bell, excuse me for a second, guys. I'm going to put you on mute for one second. Just apologies. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to quiet the dogs. If you're just joining, I have my resin over here on my heating pad. I am just warming it up so I can get rid of as many bubbles as possible. Um, because <laughs> it's going to be a real challenge in this mold to be able to keep out, to be able to get rid of bubbles because there are so many nooks and crannies and crevices and all of this underneath. Um, the joy is th this side, wh whatever bubbles do appear late that I can't get rid of, we're not going to look, we're not going to see them because the front of the mold is all of this. So hopefully the resin will pick up all this beautiful color. And if there are any bubbles, they're not on the very edges where they'll create sort of like a half circle that, you know, jacks it all up. I'm going to do my best to get in there with my skewer and make sure I encourage as many bubbles as possible to get out of there. I just don't want to scrape off any of the, maybe be really careful because these things will scrape off as that resin starts to pick up the color. It'll actually scrape the color off and you'll have what looks like this, a scrape mark in your uh, fi finished product. It's heating up, bubbles are coming to the surface. So I just want to encourage that to happen for a little bit longer. So bear with me. I didn't think I was going to pour this today because I always like to watch my projects for 45 minutes to an hour um, because you always have those late bubbles that sort of pop up. And uh, I have a, we're going, we bowl in the league on Wednesday night, so we'll be going bowling tonight. And I, I, I'm hesitant to leave it, but, you know, I got to get it poured because I'm, I'm worried that even having left the, ooh, what is that? Even having left the um, mica on it overnight, I'm hoping that, that that didn't cause any issues. Um, I see a potential problem here, so I'm going to try and fix it really quickly before I pour. I don't know that I got all of that there. I think I did, but the one of the colors I used is very similar to the color of the mold. So... I'm just going through and making sure right now that these pieces have colors, or these parts have color. So if you're just joining, I am, I've got my resin over here on the hot uh, heating pad, and I'm just trying to encourage as many bubbles as possible to rise to the surface, because I'm going to be fighting them in this particular type of mold, because it is so 
does have so much depth and differences and and all of that and um you know that's always not not the greatest for for trying to get get bubbles to escape and normally i would take my skewer and just run around the edges of whatever i'm working on but um, this will take off the mica powder and you'll have drag marks through your piece so i'm going to try and get rid of as many bubbles as possible by heating up the resin that will decrease uh, the amount of working time I have with it. This particular resin that I use from Stone Coat Countertop has a 45 minute working time. So that's a long time, but with heating it up, it cures faster when it's heated up. So um, we are just going to uh, hope for the best here. Let's see how we're looking over here. Come on, baby, heat up. Yeah, I tried to, s and it's warm enough in here already, so not, there weren't a whole lot of bubbles when I was stirring it, but there's still quite a few that I'm concerned that it's going to ruin the piece. Thank you, Val. Apologize for the silence, guys. I'm just really trying to encourage these bubbles to come out. They're getting there. I promise. I wonder. I do want to check something. But I think the silicone is so dense. Um, yeah, baby wipe will get it off. So if I have some left in there, okay, I'm all right with that. Like if some is remaining in there, I'm okay. It comes off with a baby wipe. So that makes me happy. And this stuff sh won't, shouldn't ruin your molds. I mean, easy enough to just use a baby wipe and just clean off. If it, you know, the outside of it doesn't really matter. It's not where any of the resin gets, but I do want to take care of this little girl. She was <laughs> expensive. But it's very well made. I cannot complain. Very, very, very well made. I think it weighs like two pounds, and I'm not exaggerating either. It's a hefty mold, like, you can compare it to, like, the cheap molds that I buy. <laughs> this one is so far from that, it's not even funny.
when I pour this, I'm going to pour it super slow and I'm going to pour it very, very close to the mold itself because I want no, I want, I don't want to introduce any more bubbles than are already in it. I seriously hope this works out. I'm going to be bummed if it doesn't. Here we go with the text thread again. Give me a second here, guys. We're just, I really want to make sure I get as many of these bubbles out of here as possible. And the best way to do that is to apply, it's sitting on my heating pad right now. And I can just see we're getting fewer, we have, few, we have more bubbles rising to the surface here. And I really want to encourage as many as possible to rise to the surface. Because this is going to be a challenging type of mold to keep uh, ahead of the bubbles. And I'm worried about alcohol because I don't know how, uh, how alcohol re will react to any of the, uh, the mica powder here. Um, so I'm gonna be really liberal, or very, 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 not liberal, but um, I don't know what the opposite of that, stingy with using alcohol, which is what I usually use to disperse my bubbles because it doesn't apply heat. Um, but I might really have to just, just bring in my little, my little heat gun and just you know, be very gentle and careful about where I'm applying heat so that I don't scorch the mold for one or um, cause the resin to bond to the mold um, and the heat extens uh, intense heat will do that I think we're about as good as we're going to get here guys so let the pouring begin I do want to bring this out though nice and thin because it's been sitting in the heat so funny because it's Heat helps it cure, but when you heat it up, it's super thin. Let's just set that there for right now. Oh, see, it's got a bubble there from just doing that. Okay, we're going in. Keep it really, really close.
I'm just going to do this a little bit at a time. So I'm going to do the center first, and I know my, my table is not level, so I'm going to get my shims under here. Well, this is going to be hard to see the bubbles too because um, of the colors, but that's what glare is for. Let that rest for a second. There's still a few bubbles in there, but they'll come to the surface. And now I'm just going to kind of do the rest of this. This is 16 ounces of resin. That is a lot of resin. A lot. And I might have to make more. How crazy is that? I am going to have to make like a little bit more. Wow. That is incredible. Well, <laughs> kind of is what it is, huh? How much I can do about that? So I'm just going to get to it. We're going to make about another eight ounces. That'll give me a little bit of extra, and I'm okay with that. I'd rather have too much right now than not enough. It's warm in here, so this stuff is going to want to... And this is pretty a pretty deep pour. This is one thing I like about this particular version of Stone Coat Countertops. Um, oh, shooting shit everywhere here. Resin? Is that... Good God, Tamara, could that have been any more awkward? Um, I've, this will be the deepest pour that I've done with it, but I've done some other really deep pours. Um, and it, it's held up. It's cured beautifully. There hasn't been any waves or anything on top of the piece. Um, so, but I wouldn't probably push it any more than this. I am going to hit it with some alcohol. I just really, oh, my, my earpiece is falling off. Let me stir this really quickly, and this will be more than enough, but I want to make sure yeah, I can see bubbles, and that's the thing. I can't really do much about it. So I'll scrape off that mica. But again, like I said, these bubbles will be on the back side, so I'm not going to concern myself too much with them. But I do want to try and mitigate them as best as possible and get rid of as many as possible. Finish mixing this other one here. We'll let those bubbles do their thing. There'll be more to come. Again, it's really warm in here, so um, this is going to cure pretty quickly. And I'm going to put, well, I'm probably not going to put it on the hat pad. I'm just going to cover it here. I don't want to risk it uh, 
overflowing or anything. I'm pretty full over here, and if I remember correctly, I have to kind of put one right over here. I can see that I'm not filled in in some of the areas here. Maybe a little bit more with the shim. There we go. I'm going to put one here. And just to keep it from tottering, I'm going to put one here just enough. But i got to be keep an eye on here. I don't want it to empty out here either, and it kind of is. So. I think I got enough time to put this on the heating pad to allow it to allow some of these bubbles to get out of here as well. So we're going to do that. And in the meantime, I'm just going to be heating this other one up to uh, help dispel some of those bubbles. So we'll set that aside now. Get that heating. I can see some of the mica floating to the top, actually. It's interesting. So what didn't, you know, what was loose? But again, this is going to be on the back side, so it doesn't matter. And I see something, um, I think that's just a piece of floating mica, but I'm going to check. Where did it go? That mica's really grabbing onto these bubbles. It's kind of funny to see them disperse. Yeah, that's not a... That's something that shouldn't be in there. We'll let that settle for a second. Let me double check my resin that I have. Oh, yeah, tons of bubbles in there. Oh, my God. Oh, bubbles are going to be the death of me. Again, I'm sorry if you can hear the fan. Um, I have to exhaust this uh, epoxy out the out of the window because it's not the best stuff to be breathing in for sure. And my studio is a basically a spare bedroom. Not basically, it's a spare bedroom. Be very, very careful using a heat gun and silicone molds. And this is not a heat gun. Well, it's a heat gun, but it's an uh, embossing heat gun. I, I have an actual regular heat gun that I use for larger pieces. Um, I poured a desk not too long ago. Not like the whole desk, but resurfaced the desk. 
and that little embossing tool would not do it. So I have a regular heat gun that has the different nozzles and everything on it. That would be way too much for this. I'd rather you use a blow dryer than a regular heat gun on, on silicone any day. Blow dryer is not great, but it, it's better than burning up your molds. Alcohol really is the best way to sort of disperse your bubbles that hit the surface. They won't do anything for anything that's below the surface, though. So just keep that in mind. They have to be on the surface for the alcohol to work. We are 16 ounces of resin in here right now, and I just mixed eight more. It'll probably take about four of that, but I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough because I can, I can, um, I can fill a coaster, a couple coasters or a coaster holder with whatever is left. And I've got plenty of projects that I'm working on that can use a coaster, coasters and coaster holder. Uh-oh, my battery ran out on my fan. Stan, are you still in your meeting? He might be outside. Oh, he might be outside. Hey, Stan. I just dread what's lurking underneath all of these crevices. I bet there's just massive bubbles under there. And that's why I want really this one to really do its thing because this is the final part of the pour and that's where all these, well, the bubbles in this other one that I'm doing right now, this other um, resin mix that I'm doing, that's where I want to make sure really that we get it all, get them all out of there. Sixteen ounces of resin already in there, and it wasn't enough. That is crazy. We're going to go ahead and go for it here. I still think there are too many bubbles in here for my liking. But it's also super warm in here. And this thing is going to cure like gangbusters once I leave it alone. I'm just going to go right in the center, because if there's going to be any bubbles, I can get them in the center. We'll just fill this thing up from the center. Just be really careful here because I don't know how level I am. Mm, yeah, we're getting pretty close to need to tilt it a little bit more this way. Ooh, not too much more though. We're filling in there nicely. Might be able to cure. Oh, we can actually bring that out a little bit. That's good. Now we're definitely over here. Filming this one's going to be kind of difficult, I think, just because everything's so irregular. Damn, I'm halfway back to where I stored it here. Not quite. See where I am. 
with the resin. That took almost another eight ounces. In fact, it's probably going to take all of the eight ounces. Yeah, we're coming up over here. So let's slide this guy around a little bit. See what it does for us over here. Like I said, leveling your piece is a game of cat and mouse. Yeah, we're going to... It's a game of cat and mouse. might do it. And what I'm doing now is drawing off anything that's coming over the edges here. And that's in effect taking out resin, which is kind of what I want to do right now because there's just a little bit too much in here. But I don't want to mess around with the, the shims any longer. And just take out enough to get it off the top. Eventually it will not come back. Let me look over here. Oh, we are domed there. A little bit too much over here, but that's okay. I'm going to work with it. I'm going to encourage these last little pieces here to just stay where they are. But I'm getting ready to also hit it with the heat gun. I really don't want to have to do any sanding. Um, it's just a pain in the butt. It really is a pain in the butt. So perfecting the art of doming is definitely taking me some time, but I am getting there. Oof, that's some warm resin. Oof. Feel it in my hands. I wonder if we can manipulate this just a smidge more. Just we're lifting it up a little bit. We look over here. We're good. We're good. We're good. Maybe a little bit more. Can I get away with it? I don't know. This piece is like, it's like under the, it dips down. This little tip right here. So I'm going to have to work hard to keep it off the and there's some overflow here that we're going to get rid of. Let's hit this real quick with some heat. You can feel the epoxy kind of not really burning, but getting overheated, so I'm going to stop for right now and continue to work. Oh, we're almost. Ooh, that always happens to me. Ugh, i got to stop putting my wipe down next to my skewer. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. We are looking almost perfect here, and I'm not going to mess with that anymore. Oh, uh, maybe I am. It's still, see these two pieces just kind of dip down and they're going to cause an edge and I don't want to have to sand anything off. Kind of looking at it and honestly, I mean, oof, yeah. Honestly, it can kind of go back. This It's just that edge. I mean, it can honestly go back a little bit, but then I get up over this edge here, like the rest of it is good. But there's this little tip right here that just wants to be covered up. Two of them. But we are going to beat them. We will not win. I really don't know if I should try to put some more in here, but I've got a little bit left. Might just be enough to encourage it to... 
and that's all I'm going to risk. So that goes upside down on my plastic. Try not to touch anything on me. I'm going to wear this outfit to bowling league tonight. We are going to continue to watch these bubbles for about another 40 minutes. Thankfully, the dogs aren't in here right now, so I don't have to worry about dog hair. Well, I always have to worry about dog hair, but. Bunch of teeny tiny bubbles in there. I see a couple areas that I want to clean up. Just little areas. They're just kind of dipped down into the resin there. Just enough to. Hey, Stan. Um, Jan says she's home. Well, do you want to text her? Yeah, she's on on my phone right here. Let me let her know what the deal uh, deal is since yeah. you guys talk. It's right here. Okay. Say, hey, we'll have to, we'll have to get, get a time tomorrow to get it done. The bowl. I know. I'm trying to. Where is it? Oh, you know what it is. Oh, yeah, I do know what it is. All right, guys, I think we're looking really good here. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the leveling of everything. Um, it's probably a little higher on this side than it is on this side. And I could probably, but again, I'm, then I'm fighting these little, these little, um, little tips that go in and they're, uh, they're below the, the top of the mold here. So it's not going to matter because remember, this is not the side we're going to see. We're going to see the other side. And this is why I don't like to pour when I'm getting ready to go somewhere because I got constantly have to watch it because epoxy is self-leveling, or resin is self-leveling. And it's constantly moving. I'm glad I poured it because I have plenty of time, but in, if I had my, because I wanted to, I didn't want to leave that mica in there any longer on its own. So I'm glad I poured it before we left, but if I had my druthers, I would have waited, but like I said, I didn't want to keep that mica on there unattended any longer. I could probably cut that little piece off the next time I pour this. So it's, because it almost looks like it was a piece of, the, well, no, maybe not. I guess it is still the piece of the mold there. But I was just kind of wondering if maybe it was like a piece I didn't catch to kind of trim off that they didn't catch. Oh my God, it's so hot in here. But I can't have a f like a overhead fan, an overhead fan because um, it'll blow all sorts of crap into my project. And those bubbles are still a coming up. I'm just gonna hit it with a couple things of alcohol. Again, this won't affect any of the alcohol that's below the surface of the piece um, only what's at the very at the, uh, what only what's on the surface oh, sorry it's really warm in here a little drip of sweat coming into my eye
<clears throat> Good God, my microphone was up on my forehead. Sorry about that. So we're just chasing bubbles right now. my uh, fan. I have a hand fan. Whew. It is hot, hot, hot in there. Really, really get out of here. gloves on here real quick. I have to get some more of these. I go through them so quickly. I try to reuse them when I can. Um, but I am not always successful. Give me a second, I'll be right back to the camera. Something. Where's that floor fan? I don't know where it is. It's hot in here because of all the lights. The lights are making it very warm in here. glasses back on I see something here I don't know if it's a bubble or if something popped into the the resin I think it's a bubble I'm gonna have to get to it quickly because if the alcohol doesn't take care of it like that and it's on the surface it's almost I'm gonna be chasing it yep there we go yeah a couple little tiny bubbles in there that you're just I mean, unless you have a vacuum chamber, you're just probably not going to be able to get rid of them. So you just have to resign yourself to it. And I'm not really interested in purchasing a vacuum chamber, frankly. I just don't have the desire to do that. This might actually turn out rather nicely, provided the, the what, what I'm mostly worried about, provided the uh, leaving the mica on overnight on the mold didn't um, cause any sort of bonding activity with um, the resin or with the 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 silicone mold and the and the um, mica powder. look all right I mean this is just gonna be the death of me over here but I will keep working on it I have about let's see I have about 10 minutes before I have to get ready basically that's just you know throwing some makeup so I don't scare the natives here in Northern California Man, we look really good here, I'm not gonna lie. Just gonna keep chasing this one. 
And with, with this being such a dark piece, meaning, you know, with the mica and every, everything's kind of dark, it's hard for me to see the bubbles, so I have to sort of look to the side and catch the glare in the light um, that I have, light, lighting that I have on this. We are getting there. I'm just more concerned about larger bubbles popping up. Well, the ones, you know, you're going to get those in every piece. And you'll notice them mostly when you put them up to the light. Otherwise, you probably won't even notice those little micro bubbles. That's just more for you as an artist where you're criticizing yourself or you're really hard on yourself for, oh my gosh, there's micro bubbles in there. Well, even with a vacuum chamber, you can't get them all out. So, just do your best and love it no matter what. And I am looking at this and I do see there's a little piece there that I see should have cut off when I inspected the mold. You probably can't, I know you can't see it in the, the little flap right there. It's kind of what's causing this issue right now. I can fix that the next time though, it's not a big deal. Not a large deal at all. I wonder how many bubbles are up and underneath these. I just, I just dread to think about it. a little bit there. I'm just actually just I'm gradually taking out just a little bit of resin each time I do this. So eventually it will not be over the tip of that. And right now it's, there's a bubble there for one. Um, but uh, I might have to just deal with it and I've got a little tiny file that I can get in there and while it's soft I can sort of just break that off. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. We are about as good as we are going to get, I think. Giving it a little side look here with the light. And I think we look really good. Now, only time will tell if <laughs> leaving that mic in overnight made a, was, was going to cause a problem. I guess we'll see. I'll be right back. Give me one second, and then I'll say goodbye, and we will uh, sign off the stream. <coughs> Hi, baby girls. What's up, Buttercup? See how we look in here. Okay, we can hit it again with some alcohol, I think. Yep. Just chasing those bubbles. Yeah, I just don't think we're going to be able to get rid of that little spot there. Much as I try, I mean, I can try to encourage it to go over this way a little bit more, but then I'm going to end up over here with the same issue. So we're just going to have to um, deal with it. There's a big old bubble there. Oh, got it. Came to the surface.
Amy, I'm Franklin. You're not even real. Notice that anyway. It's gonna be in. It's gonna be behind it. I don't know why I'm fighting it so hard. Like if this were like the top of something that I wanted the top and the bottom to look equally beautiful, regardless of what it looks like on this side or the other side, I would be fighting that, continuing to fight that. But since this is going to be the back that's going to be against the wall, I'm not. I'm not even gonna worry about it anymore. You're not gonna be able to see it. Yeah, I see some bubbles that are just kind of wanting to. It doesn't matter, right? And I don't want to encourage it too much because I don't want to scrape off the mica. But if I can encourage it to float, there we go. Maybe. Yeah, it's starting to get nice and thick. So we're on the we're on the verge of the point of no return, if you will, with respect to doing anything major with this piece right now. I think it looks okay. We just gotta hope that. <laughs> That it pulls all that mica out of the mold. <laughs> That's the big concern right now. And again, I don't know why I'm even fighting the bubbles. Yeah, that one bubble did finally come to the surface. So hard, you're not going to be able to see them. It's habit. Habit. Bubbles are the bane of every r resin artist. They just are. Boy, oh boy, if this was the front, though, <laughs> it wouldn't. If this is the surface, the, the side that you'd see, it really doesn't look all that bad. It's pretty good. So fingers crossed, this actually turns out, and it pulls all that mica out of that, or the resin pulls all that mica out of the mold, and we have this beautiful blue sunflower. And I'll make two more of these, actually, in different colors. So stay tuned. I really enjoyed you guys. For those of you who joined, um, if you are on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you have any advice on things that I can do differently, that would be even better. It would be awesome. Um, otherwise, feel free to ask questions, and I'll do my best.